Hi everyone, Kirk here with Kirk's Motorrad Shop in Crystal Lake, Illinois, bringing you another do-it-yourself video. This video is going to be on re uh, putting on some brand new brake lines on this R1150 RT, and of course I'm using Spiegler brake lines. I've I have now installed hundreds of sets of Spiegler brake lines, and they just continue to be the very best brake lines, in my opinion, that you can buy to replace the OE lines, those garbage OE lines that BMW decided to cheap out and put on these motorcycles back in the day. Uh, they're, they're rubber brake lines on here or rubber coated brake lines and they break down really bad. They're, they're very very unsafe at this time uh, when they were brand new they were fine but BMW only rated them for about six years and that being the case this is a uh, I think this is an 03 maybe. Anyways, it doesn't matter. They're way past their prime. So it is time to change out the brake lines on this. Now in order to do this job, you need to remove these panels. Uh, I hope that you know how to do that already. Uh, I'm not going to show that process here on this particular video. Next next thing you'll see is the, the covers are going to be removed. And you need to do that in order to get to the brake lines uh, where they attach. Also, you need to be able to access underneath the gas tank the ABS pump itself. So when it comes time to flush it out, you have uh, access and able to do that. So let's get started on this. If you want me to work on your motorcycle, just contact me through kirksmotorrod.com. You'll see a link right down below. Even if you're on, a, on your phone and you scroll all the way to the bottom, You'll, you'll see the description, the title description, probably at the very bottom, and you'll be able to get in contact me, with me, and I can uh, get you set up on how to get it here and get the thing changed out. So let's get started. So once you get all of your covers and the gas tank off, you can start right here at the front brake reservoir. It really helps if you have the correct tools. Now, you can use just a regular, you know, standard Phillips to get these out, or if you've got the little hex head, you you know, you'll you'll figure out what you need at that time. But the correct one would be a JIS, so that's the Japanese Industrial Standard, and that is a vessel screwdriver. You can find those on my Amazon page. Uh, you can find them at other retailers too, but uh, just to help you guys out and to help myself out just a little bit pick one up from there uh, they it's just a number two but it's uh, the Japanese industrial standard and these are just ridiculously good for not camming out the the screws so go ahead and remove these screws uh, it's also a very good idea to go ahead and cover up whether it's your paintwork if you've got custom paintwork down here or your windshield you don't want to get anything on your windshield so I'm gonna go ahead and put a, a quick cover on that that way you don't have to worry about any any brake fluid popping out of there if I bump the handle so just position the reservoir so that it's mostly flat it's gonna be tilted down but that's the way it is I mean if it drips out of there no big deal you're gonna remove it all anyway I like to just keep everything in a little magnetic tray if these haven't been off of there in a while sometimes you got to take a small flat blade screwdriver and and break that little seal loose and this one has definitely not been done in a while because the fluid is quite dark I'll take something to extract out the fluid or you can you know, just use uh, paper towels or something and and get most of it out of there. In this case, I'm just going to suck it out of there. Um, if there's debris or anything inside there or you see evidence of water, you want to make sure you clean out this reservoir very well. I'm just going to take a rag, stuff it in there. Now we're going to loosen this one up right here. This is a 6 millimeter hex. This is the banjo bolt that goes directly to this reservoir. Uh, you can, if you have anything that's zip tied along the way here, go ahead and clip those out of the way. Uh, in this case, it's just a single, it's not really a zip tie, it's just a little connection point down there to hold it against the bar. So, 
six millimeter hex and crack that loose. Oh my gosh! Sometimes these things are very, very stuck, so make sure you use very good quality tools. You don't have to have this long one, you can use the short ones, whatever you can get in there. But don't use cheap tools here. You want to have something that's good quality. This, In this case, this is a snap-on one. But there's other manufacturers that make very good quality ones. You can certainly find good quality ones on Amazon. Don't skimp out on these tools. Otherwise, you could risk uh, stripping these out. And then that would be a disaster. So we're not going to have any disasters today. We're just going to get this job done. You can go ahead and remove that if you want. I'm going to remove that. Might get a little bit that drips out. Not a big deal. Don't worry about the the little copper washers that are on the banjo bolt. There's little copper washers here. Don't worry about those because the kit comes with brand new ones that you're going to use. Uh, it's going to come with some aluminum ones. So we got that top line off. Now I got to come over and take the bottom part of the line off. All right, here's the connection point right here coming down. There's a little rubber cap on there. You, yours may or may not have that rubber cap. Sometimes they come off. Let's go ahead and pull that cap off of there. Uh, it's covering up a grub screw that's right here, but you don't need to mess with that. This is a 17 millimeter. So we're just gonna go ahead and break that loose. Put a, a rag down, because you'll, you'll definitely get some brake fluid out of here. So I'll just set a rag down on the uh, Right, right down on the swing arm down here, or the little A arm, I should say. All right, I'm gonna have to put a another wrench on here because this is not strong enough. It's uh, it's already starting to move. So there we go. It's 15. All right, once you get this line out of here, you can take that line all the way out and then just go ahead and discard that now in your kit when you open up your Spiegler line kit there should be some stickers on some of the ends of these that says MC first that's master cylinder so we know that that one goes up in this area here and we're just gonna go ahead and uh, feed that up ba basically back where it was I like to also wait until I you know have just about all of the the lines in place and then go through and torque everything at the same time so I don't forget anything so I don't risk forgetting now I may have to adjust the angles on these and you do that just by either putting the pliers here they also carry they have in the little in the little parts kit there's a these little blocks these little blue blocks that you can put in there to clamp on there if you don't want to you know if you're really careful crazy about like not scratching up this is just bare aluminum so it's not that big of a deal if it does get scratched up but if it was an anodized one if it was like the blue anodized or something it wouldn't want you would not want to scratch those up along the way so I'm just gonna get this back into place though so remember to change out your your little washers on the banjo bolts so we just put one on there and then another and just put that back in there there's no real particular order uh, it is it is a good idea to work from the top down uh, just so you don't mess anything up or, or drain something out too far you know if, if, if it gets like a, a suction going you, you don't want to pull any of the fluid out of the ABS pump so it's a good idea just to go ahead and start at the top work your way down I'm gonna go ahead and break this one loose right here and I'm also gonna cut these zip ties so that we're gonna re next we're gonna replace the the line that comes down here the one that comes from the ABS pump sorry you guys can't really see that too good it's very tough sometimes to get the right angles you see the line it goes here it's connected here 
and it goes down to this manifold that's right here. That right there is the ABS wire, a little sensor wire that goes to the front wheel. Okay. Again, it might leak out a little bit. Don't worry about that. So now we're going to remove the banjo bolt here from the caliper. Okay. Take a rag and wrap that around because it's going to leak out. It'll just stop the brake fluid from getting all over the all over the calipers. This is just a little 10 millimeter holding on this part here. This is an 11 millimeter. That's one that's on the back side of this. I'm going to pull off the one on the caliper. And then we can pull this, this whole hose assembly right out, the OE one. When you get a big bend in here like this, this is usually where they will break, right in this area. Um, any Anything that gets repeatedly twisted, uh, these rubber lines, gosh, they're just garbage. Anyway, throw that in the garbage. Next, you're going to find a line that looks like this. It will may or may not have the ABS unit sticker on there. Take one of our our banjo bolts. Just thread that in there for now. You're going to find your little three-way manifold. And just gonna thread that on there. Next you're going to find this line here, one that's got the male end. The other side, so you don't get it confused, has the female end. That one's going to go over there. So the right side is that one. We'll go ahead and I'm thread that in. Next take here, don't, don't forget to change out your washers. The lines orient to the, uh, th there's a little stop that's on the caliper. Just make sure it's behind the little stop so when you tighten it down, it goes against the stop. Take that little 11 millimeter fitting and thread that in. Put that part back on here. This can be kind of tough to put back on there. Sometimes it, it's easier to to save this one for last or you know just if you take this one out it's not fighting against you so much any way you get it on there is going to work okay <laughs> how about that there we go okay with these these three are pretty much on there at this point and um, i'm going to go ahead and tighten those down these three connections right here because i'm standing right here and i might as well do it Just want to tighten those down until they get a pretty good bite. You're going to check everything after you're done, and if you got any leaks, obviously you know you got to tighten it up a little bit more. But these are very well made. These connections are very well made, and I've never seen a leak yet. Actually, yet, so they're good. There we go. All right, so I'll still have to torque this down, torque the ones up here down. I'm going to do that after I finish off the left side of the bike. Over here on the left side of the bike, got one little zip tie to clip away here. Holding that wire on. It goes behind it. This little 
thing right here has a rubber grommet in it, and underneath this grommet you might may or may not be able to see it but there's a 14 millimeter hex under here to grab onto what you can do is undo this connection first and then work this thing down even maybe you might have to spray a little bit of WD or something on there a little WD-40 to lubricate it so you can pull it down far enough to be able to see it well, if you can hear that song in the background that's uh, one of the songs I used in one of my videos that one for that little Technax disco ball that was a fun video I enjoyed doing that one probably should do some more fun videos let me know what you think in the comments I got some ideas alright there it is right there 14 mil and then take your 11 and undo this top one here <clears throat> take that line throw it away go ahead and hook the other one back up the new one let's get it started put your washers on and get this threaded in go ahead and tighten that up correctly or get the good and tight it does have a torque spec at its uh, 18 newton meters but very difficult to get a torque wrench on these so as long as you make them tight enough that they don't leak then that's all you need I'm gonna take your torque wrench and go ahead and start torquing these down all of your banjo bolts these are at uh, 18 Newton meters Then we'll go back up to the top and do that last one up there. All right, at this top one here, it's going to go back on there, but a lot of times, almost always, these are in the wrong, either in the wrong direction entirely, or they're just slightly off, and you'll need to rotate it in order to get where it needs to be. See, so I can't really twist this thing, otherwise it'll twist up the line. So that's what I was talking about before with those blocks. And what you do now is you take, it comes with a little piece of plastic. What I just do is I take a pair of pliers, grab onto the bottom of this thing underneath where the, the little joint is. Okay. And then I just twist it where it needs to go. And then test it. And if it's not not right yet then do it again just keep doing it till you get it where it needs to be some of them rotate really easy sometimes they're a little bit more difficult but regardless you'll get it now that we got everything torqued down on the front we're gonna go ahead and move right on to the rear so you got your reservoir here and take a clamp of some kind you might have something in your toolbox you can use uh, if you like these clamps these are very handy and they're very inexpensive too you can find them on my Amazon page the ones that look just like it in a different color anyways put a clamp on this reservoir line so it does not continue to drain down when you open up the lines all right let's pull the cap off of there and I'm going to vacuum out the remaining brake fluid that's in there. That, that one doesn't look quite as bad as the, the top looked. The other place I want you to put clamps is on the drain lines for the overflow on the ABS pump itself. Now, I don't know which one's which here. I don't, I don't know if it's the, the bottom one goes. I can probably trace it up there if I really wanted to. But I'm just going to put a clamp on both of these lines. The reason I'm clamping off these lines is because it will slow down the 
the siphon effect a little bit if air is not getting through the vent it's going to slow that down as I pull off the line that goes here and change this line out now I got all this stuff clamped up I can go ahead and clip all the zip ties that are holding on this uh, the speed sensor right here so right here behind the this frame piece here where the footrests go there could be a little protector piece on here that's holding on to everything so that it doesn't chafe and create wear if you do have that you can pull this off uh, oh, there's another zip tie you can just in there with little tabs. Uh, if you do wind up breaking the tabs off, you can you can just zip tie the thing back on there. Not the end of the world. And it just opens up like that, just like a little clamp thing. And it's got little tabs. You just push these back together when you're done. Okay, now I'm ready to take the brake line off. Yeah, put some rags down. Just kind of stuff them in there so they catch a little bit it's going to drip out we've got our new line it's going to go and then there this one's almost in line pretty close all right now we're going to go ahead and do this part of the job if you see that it's leaking out you know don't get too alarmed unless you're you have to walk away then you want to make sure you seal this thing up you don't really want to drain out the entire reservoir on the ABS pump otherwise that could uh, you know you could in ingest air up there or something it's the less air you get into the system the better off you're gonna be in the end here so all right let's go with this again if it starts moving put a wrench on it so if you're not dripping you don't have to you know be in a gigantic hurry but if it sits there dripping and you can't figure out why, just move along. Alright, once we get all of our hoses done, we're going to go ahead and put our zip ties all back in. And if you have one of these, you're probably going to have to zip tie this thing in place because the diameter of the new line is smaller than the old line was. I'm going to zip tie this off camera. I know you guys can figure out how to zip tie things. Just make sure your wires don't go anywhere that they can't, you know, uh, get into the wheels or into the brakes. Otherwise, you could wind up with no ABS. Okay, all the zip tying's done, so let's go ahead and take all the clamps off. Now we're going to bleed the brakes, so we're going to fill up this top reservoir here. At least put some in there. Very, very important step is to get the air out of the master cylinder. And you do that by just doing this. And you'll see little bubbles coming up inside the reservoir. When those bubbles, when you get those mostly cleared out, then you can, uh, or all the way cleared out, you can proceed. But this will take a little while, but just sit there and tap on this. Sometimes you gotta move the handlebar a little bit, because it'll, it'll cause that bubble to, you know, move a little bit closer to the, the hole there. But just keep doing this until you get it Pretty much so there's no bubbles coming out at all anymore. Very, very important. A lot of you guys, a lot of guys out there have contacted me saying that they can't get the brakes to bleed, and this is almost always the issue. It's also very important at this point to have some kind of protection so you don't throw anything up onto your paint or on your windshield. Because as you're doing this, the the fluid inside jumps. You might be able to see it a little bit in there jumping every once in a while. And if you squeeze this too fast, it will jump right out and now you got run paint to deal with. So getting very, very close now. You can see how long this takes. It's it's no joke. It takes a while. Don't 
just be patient and work it. You'll get it. If I didn't have that, that shield right there, that would have jumped right out onto the paint. Alright, for the most part, this is ready to, to start bleeding now. After you get that blood out, now we're going to go and we're going to bleed at the ABS pump first before we do any, anything else. So if you've got two bleeder nipples that are on this particular model, they're standing straight up here just behind the electrical connection. Can't really see it very good in the video, but they are there. Those are little 7 millimeter uh, bleeder nipples. So, get your 7 millimeter wrench on there. Now, if you don't have one of these fancy tools like this, you can uh, take a just a 7 millimeter, maybe a cheap one or something from Harbor Freight, you know, something you don't care about ruining, and heat it up and bend it over at a 90 degree angle, and it will it will help you to do this with it. I'll put your little reservoir on there. Sorry I'm not showing this totally good. If I had a cameraman, I think I could probably do this a little bit better. However, you're going to get the, uh, the idea here real quick. So now you open up this bleeder and you're going to squeeze the handle all the way down and then close it. And you're going to repeat this action until you get clear fluid with no bubbles coming out. It won't take very long because the distance between the handlebar reservoir and the ABS pump itself is not very far. Keep an eye on your ABS res your uh, your reservoir up here on the handlebar. You don't want that to get down below. I don't even like to get it down below half, uh, but don't let it get down to the bottom. Otherwise, you're going to be starting over. You're going to have air in there, and you're going to be starting all over again. So now go ahead and top off your your master cylinder, and then put your your cap back on there. Take this rubber part this little bladder here off and dry this all out so this is you can see it's got brake fluid in it but we want to dry that up just so it reduces the risk of making a mess when you put it uh, back on there gives you a chance to inspect it too make sure it's okay these don't really go off and uh, uh, they don't really go bad too often just press it back into place and Put it back on there. Just tighten the cap down in a crisscross pattern. You don't have to go all crazy on it, just snug it up good. Just pretty much to where they stop turning. That's that. Clean up any, uh, any brake fluid that might be hanging around. You can kind of mop it up at the edge. And that's that one's done. Now move it over to the rear side, which is right next to it. By the way, we're using uh, oh, there we go, Synthetico. No, Synthetic. Uh, so it's dot three or four. It's dot three and four in this case. It calls for dot four, but you can use three and four because it's basically dot four. Uh, dot four just has a little bit uh, higher boiling temperature than dot three. I think that's why they call for it in the bike. So I just like to make sure that this will move before I start. It's going to be the same, really the same procedure. Make sure your reservoir's topped up. And you're going to open this up and then press down on the on the rear brake. Close it, lift up. Just keep repeating that process. Keep an eye on your reservoir. Once again, we really shouldn't have too much here in the way of filling, uh, you know, or having to flush this for quite a while. Because this reservoir really didn't get drained out. It, it didn't drain the hard line. There's a, there's a hard line down here that goes up to the ABS pump. And it, it really should already be full. So you're just 
doing yourself a favor flushing this out right now. On other models, you, there's a brake line that you have to change, and then it takes a little bit longer to, to take care of that. But we're just flushing out this front circuit. Now we need to flush the ABS pump out, and we need to flush that to the circuits, so the front circuit and the rear circuit, or the, or the calipers. We're going to use a funnel like this. You can find these funnels over on Beamer Shop, uh, I'm sorry, Beamer Boneyard. You can find these funnels at Beamer Boneyard. They're, they're getting kind of pricey, but they're worth it. I mean, they really, realistically, they pay themselves off in the first use because of how much it costs to uh, do your brake flush as it is. So they screw into the, the two reservoirs that are right here. We're going to do the front circuit first. There's these little caps that are on there with the hoses. Just unscrew those and then screw this in there. It does help if you, you know, if your if your fluid is really filthy to take that syringe and pull all the fluid out of this. It will uh, it just makes the job a little bit faster because it, it will you'll have nothing but clean fluid going to the lines instead of trying to flush all that that dirty fluid through it. Anyway, so what we're gonna do now is we're gonna put some brake fluid in this funnel. When it's running, it will it will start to go down with how hard you squeeze the brake lever. Okay, once again, just make sure you crack your brake line open. Just make sure that it opens. It does. And that way, you know you'll be able to get this, this flush going on here. Leave your wrench on there. Put your hose on it. I'm going to turn your key on and let it run through its little self-test. And then you're going to squeeze the, the brake just a little bit until the pump runs. You hear it running. Then you're going to open up this line and just let the pump do its thing. Keep an eye on that funnel. You want to run at least a, a funnel full through there. Oh, nicely, you can see the, the funnel going down. Right when it hits the bottom, just stop. So as soon as that thing drops to the, where the level is, you know, right at the very top, quick. <laughs> so now we've got all the, the fluid flushed out of the ABS pump. We just have to do just a little bit now on the opposite side of the bike. So we, we're just going to put in a little bit of fluid, not very much at all. There we go. That's going to be enough to flush out. Uh, the other side of this thing because all the fluid is all the way down to this this junction block we just need to push the air that's in the crossover line uh, to the other caliper and then we're done with that Go ahead and move the funnel then over to the other reservoir. Just make sure your reservoirs are topped off in case you accidentally uh, drained a little more than you should have before you put the caps on. So put some more fluid in your res in your funnel and then we'll prep to uh, just flush out the rear brakes. So on this model you only have just one, one bleeder. Makes it easy. Other models like the, the LT has them on both sides of the of the rotor. It's got four pistons in there. So again, just make sure it moves. It did. And we're just going to do the same thing. We're just turn the key on, hit the rear brake. It's going to then open this up and cycle it through. All right, so that's how you do the brake lines on an RT, on an older model L RT. If you got any questions, put them down below. I, I do read all the comments that go down on these videos. Maybe, who knows, maybe you got some good tips out of this. Uh, if you'd like to tip me, there's some links right down below, and you can uh, help me out, whether it's through using my Amazon links or some of the other ways that I mentioned before. But, guys, thanks so much for watching. Uh, again, if you got any questions, or if you want me to work on your bike, then... 
just hit me up at kirksmotorrod.com and I will see you on the next one. Take care. Anyway, if you want to send me a tip or two, then just hit those links right down below. <laughs> you like that segue? That was pretty cool. Yeah, that was all right. Yeah. <laughs> oh, gosh.